Welcome back to Source ADV. I'm Mark Jackson. Today we're going to go over swapping a tire uh, using with the tubeless system and also using slime in that process and how that changes the normal process. And we're also there's also going to be a video about doing it all without any you know special tools, no tire press needed, nothing like that. I found that the tubeless system is incredibly incredibly easy to do a swap on. So I'll just walk you guys through what you need. This tire, although it doesn't look that fried, actually is really fried because, as you can see here, let's see. As you can see here, I've actually been running really low PSI in the desert, and it's been ripping the lugs off here and actually opening up the tire right into the main part of the, uh, the main compartment for the air. So I've got one, two, and then let's see three right there on the side lugs where these are actually tearing off. Um, I think it's because I'm running the tubeless system at six PSI in the desert, which in hindsight is probably not the best idea. The traction feels great, but I think it's beating the crap out of these side lugs. So let's go through everything you need uh, to, you know, do it basically no special tools, no tire breaker, no Rabaconda, anything like that. Uh, tire swap with the tubeless. So, First thing you're going to need is a bunch of different tire irons. I like to have a combination of the spoons from Tusk, the ones that have like a nice little, as you can see here, got a nice little spoons on there. And then I got some nice skinny tipped uh, traditional tire irons as well. Um, you don't need it, but this Motion Pro Bead Pro tool is really nice because it allows you to pop the bead. And I'll show you how you do that in a second. If you don't have this, that's okay, because it's like 90 bucks for a pair of tire irons, so you don't have to do that. Uh, you can just lean on the edge of the tire with your knees, but this is really helpful for popping the bead, and it's also two more irons. Um, you're gonna need, or you, well, you're probably gonna want a five gallon pail, or, or this one is probably a three gallon pail. It makes it way easier, uh, and it's kind of like a baby tire stand. I'll show you what this looks like. Essentially, just use the pail, the tire stand, nice little seat is good, and then you can just spin it around and do what you need to do. Makes it pretty straightforward. You're gonna need a tool to uh, open up your valve stems. Uh, you will need to actually fully drain both the inner liner and the outer uh, chamber as well. Uh, so if you don't have a tool to open up your valve stems, fun fact is that on the inside, of the slime bottles, there's actually a valve stem removal tool right there too. So if you're doing this with slime, you have a valve stem tool. Good to know. Um, the other thing you're gonna need is some classic Armor All protectant. This is what we're gonna use as our lube for getting the tire on the rim and making sure that everything's all lubed up for the initial sealing of the tire. And with that being said, I like to put a plastic bag over my disc because I don't wanna be spraying a bunch of Armor All on the disc of my uh, rear brakes because I don't like, I like my brakes to work. So I usually just kind of put this plastic bag right over the disc like that and just make sure that I'm not goobering it all up. Now the last thing I need is some kind of cleaner. There's gonna be a lot of nasty excess slime in here. It's kind of gross. So just some kind of cleaner goes a long way. Um, and if you really want to, you could theoretically use a bead buddy as well. I find you don't really need it. Uh, for the system. So yeah, um, the tubeless company does give you this little tool as well, which is to help make sure that the tire doesn't get, um, it's, it's, it's actually to help get the tire on the, on the, the wheel the right way from like the initial part of getting the tire on the wheel. You don't need this, but it is a little bit helpful. So you can use this again if you want to. So these two kind of optional, Bead breaker tool from Motion Pro, kind of optional, but uh, yeah. Um, the last thing you do definitely need though is you're gonna want a torque wrench of some kind to uh, retorque your rim lock. So, cool. Okay, so first thing first, just gonna be getting all of the air out of both chambers. Like I said, inside the slime bottles, there is a valve stem tool, it's nice and small. Gets in between the spokes really easily. There we go. 
So after that, I usually just take the valves themselves and put them on a paper towel somewhere else. All right, so as you can see, I've actually temporarily swapped out the bucket for resting the tire on my new tire. That's because I just like to have, when I'm breaking the beads, I just like to have a little bit more uh, stability on the ground. Um, so, but before you do that, you're gonna wanna go ahead and grab a 14 millimeter or whatever size your rim lock is on the most tube assistant, I'll show you 14 millimeter, millimeter, and just get that guy loosened up. It's time to break the bead. Um, basically, if you don't have the Motion Pro Bead Pro, right? So this guy slips into the bead and then you open it and it gets fatter. So that's really helpful. But if you don't have that, you could theoretically just kind of use your knees and go around the edges and it will eventually break and just keep pressing it down. Like that. And then just work your way around. You can spin the tire like that. And just work your way around the tire. So if you had the bead pro tool, you just force one edge down and then pop it. But it's pretty easy with just your knees too. Now, once you get back the side broken, go ahead and break the bead on the other side. And you're good to go. So from there, I'll swap the tire it's resting on with the bucket and get myself set up. Start getting the tire off the wheel. So I like to start kind of right between the rim lock and the, the air valve there. One thing you want to do is just make sure you don't pinch your inner bladder. So kind of wiggle the your tire out, iron around and make sure that that red bladder is staying right in the center of the rim, right? Because if you have your tubeless system in here, there's that red inner liner and you just wanna make sure that that guy's staying there. The cool thing is with these little tire irons, you can then, once they're out, you just put them right underneath your disc. And just kinda, of, one of the things you're gonna really wanna make sure you do is get the tire deep down in the center groove of the rim. You give yourself as much room as possible to work with. And just start working your way around. And once again, in those early ones, just make sure that you're not pinching your ladder at all. That you're only on the edge of the tire, not on the bladder. There we go. There we go. And there we go. Cool. Not too bad. I did take a pretty good chunk out of the bead right here, so this tire is probably, this tire is, I mean, it was fried already, but it's definitely fried now. So once again, you really just wanna make sure that you don't pinch that inner bladder. Get through one side, flip it over, and start again on the other side. With the sprocket side, just be really careful, right? You don't wanna jam yourself into the sprocket. It's always fun. Remember, if you think you're pinching that inner bladder, just Take it really slow, take a look in there. Okay, so now that both sides of the tire are technically free, you can stand the tire up like so, and all you gotta do, pull it out. Kind of work its way, pull it out to the side, and just kind of work it out in the middle. There we go. All right, so this is where the bucket is also helpful. You can kind of rest the tire on the bucket like so, and just take a look at your inner bladder. Make sure it still looks good and pinch it or anything like that. Looks 
pretty good. It's got no wear on it. That's nice. Cool. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and at this point, you're gonna need your cleaner. I just use the Armor All multi-purpose cleaner and a bunch of shop towels. And just give this thing a really good cleaning, get all the old slime off of it. You'll also be able to see whether or not there's any other issues with the inner liner if you give it a nice cleaning. Get the inside of the rim really nice and clean too, where the bead sealing surface is. Yeah, the one major downside of the slime is that this part is always pretty gross. Um, you know, there's no way, no way around not having a tire full of slime <laughs> when you're changing it, which is always fun. All right, so, Tire is decently clean, got all the old slime out. You know, if you, at this point, um, it's actually a pretty good time if you thought you might have pinched the bladder or anything like that, um, you can always refill. You can always check this inner chamber and make sure that it's still holding pressure. You don't have to put the valve stem back in to do that. You can just uh, pump it up a little bit. So let's check that. All right. I'm not going to pump it up, obviously, to any high pressure. I just put in 20 PSI. Everything still holds great. I'm not hearing any leaks or anything like that. So I know that inner, inner bladder is still in good shape. So that's awesome. Okay, now that you get the wheel all cleaned up, from this point forward, lubrication is your best friend. Um, so grab your regular original Armol protectant. Uh, the reason I'm using original Armor All Protectant versus soapy water is that it's controversial whether or not the soapy water may hurt the chemical structure of the slime. So, and supposedly the Armor All Protectant does not. Um, I found that the Armor All Protectant is just a great lubricant, so uh, it's a win-win for me. I haven't had any issues with the slime, so let's do it. So, you got your rim all cleaned up, everything, if you, you know, if you tested your bladder, make sure that's okay, uh, make sure there's no you know, bad dings or anything like that, or bad areas in your rim um, that's gonna hurt your new tire. So, but the thing is just to go around and just go ahead and lube up the bladder, the rim, and all that. Just make sure you get it into all those little crannies on the side of the rim and everywhere. This is where that plastic bag comes in handy. The reason you're doing this now is because it's much harder to do it once you have the tire, well, once you have the rim set in the tire, okay? Cool. I'm learning a little low here. All right, hopefully I have enough of that. Um, I'm just gonna let this kind of flop over for a second here. I'm actually gonna hit, get your tire, line up whichever direction you want it to go, of course, if your tire's directional. I'm actually just kind of spray some of this in my hand and rub the bead like this. It'll do the same on the other side. This you do, take that two loose bead tool, go right there, and put your rim down into the tire. Sometimes you gotta give her a hell. There we go. So then you get the whole, watch your rim lock on your bead up here right there we go then you just get the wheel inside the tire like so and you pull out your little tool and now get your wheel back on your pail and you're ready to start setting your bead you got your tire on the wheel but it's on the outside of the rim right so let's talk about getting it into the bladder um, so at this point i'm actually gonna spend a few minutes I'm actually going to re-lube the whole tire again. Once again, lube is your best friend. Can't go wrong. All right. And just give that a little rub around like so. The thing is, okay, so I know I said earlier that the, the bead buddy or, you know, whatever bead tool you use is optional, but once, if you're 
honestly, if you're lubed up enough, like it really, it really shouldn't, it almost shouldn't be optional because it, it just gets so slippery. But the slipperiness is what's gonna make sure you don't pinch anything and also make it really easy to go on. So let's talk about getting that on. So I've got my rim lock here and my valve stem here. You wanna go on the opposite side of the rim lock as the, as the valve stem. So if the valve stem's on my left, I'm gonna put two spoons into the, the rim right here, get this guy down, and then just get my bead, let's call it, we'll call it a bead friend. I don't know what Tusk calls it. But essentially we're just gonna get that guy down in there. And then what I need to do here real quick is just kind of force this bead on here as much as I can. And then my first, I'm gonna pull this over here a little bit. Okay. Like so. And then my first spoon in to the actual tire is gonna be just uh, in between the, the rim lock and the valve stem. And while I'm doing this, I'm also going to be pushing the rim lock with my finger so that it has a little bit of room. So there we go, get that started. And then I'm gonna start pulling from over here. I'm just gonna to wanna to keep a little pressure down on the bead so that it starts pulling itself in and the rim and this bead tool kind of keeps everything in. Remember to put a little pressure on your rim lock so that it starts sucking it in right there. Oh, there we go. Just kind of keep leveraging it down. Make sure your rim lock's not getting caught up on anything. And I'm just gonna sneak this spoon in like so. And actually my, my pail's a little slippery too from all that overall. There we go. And just keep working my way around. I like these tusk spoons because they are pretty easy to get underneath. They're nice and short, so they go underneath the sprocket pretty easily. All right, I just want to make sure that everything's nice. Getting in good. Okay. Get kind of close here. You just want to make sure that that bead is down in the trough of the rib as much as it can be to put as least amount of stress on these final poles here. here in the middle, there's my valve stem. So my bead tool is gonna go on the left side of the rim lock. So I'm gonna put two spoons right in here, like so. Get myself a little bit of room. Slide my bead tool on there, there we go, cool. And that's my end point. I did not re-lube this side, so it's a good time to re-lube. You're probably seeing well why the plastic bag is so important, because you would be goobering the heck out of your disc brake rotor. Now give that a nice little rub. I like to try to get some of it on the inside, bead there. 
Cool. All right, so then our first poles, right, are gonna be fall right by the inner liner valve stem. And it'd be super gentle. Just make sure this guy gets down nice and easy. I'm also gonna have to make sure that that rim lock, the bead gets around the rim lock, right? That's really important. Sometimes it's, you can just take a tire around and hit it. You just wanna make sure that that guy gets in there nice and early. Sometimes you actually have to take the, the whole nut all the way off to get the space you need. Kind of just wiggle it around. Once again, it's all about just getting a little more space. So keep hitting the rim lock, the tire iron. You can also push, push on the bead of the tire a little bit. Just gonna push that down. I'm actually gonna try to get another bite on the tire because I think I need a little bit more pressure. So I'm just gonna go over here, take a little bite, like so. There we go, pull out that spoon, give that a little hit, give our little rim lock a little tap again. And I think we are just past it. Let's give it another bite, like so. Okay. Here's this spoon here. All right, keep us moving down here. A little bite. A little bite. It's crazy that this five gallon pail is basically like a free tire stand up. A little bite. Sometimes you can use your foot, like so. Kind of helps. Once again, you just need to make sure that you get that feed as far down in that rim, the trough of the rim as possible for these final ones. You don't want to put a bunch of pressure on the actual bead of the tire and tear it or anything like that. All right. Oops, too slippery. Let's get that one down again. I'm gonna go nice little bites. Use my foot to stabilize it. There we go. There we go. Get that tire down in that hole. Getting closer. close. Remember, just get that tire down in that trough. It'll make the rest pretty easy. Well, I really screwed myself, guys. So, okay. So if you manage to not get that final slide down, uh, it helps to have these traditional kind of little tire irons around like so. Because you can slide in that point and then get it to catch on the lip and then you can pull it down. Like so. And see, there we go. Got the last bite. And we are on. Whew, that was fun. Well, I'm glad we kind of had that issue because it kind of shows what can go wrong even when doing everything right. So basically what happened was I was too close to the end and I didn't take a big enough final bite to get a short enough of that, right? So when you're about anywhere from about like five, you know, 10 inches away from the, the bead tool, make sure that your final bite is a nice big bite where you can just kind of torque the whole thing over and slide it over. All right, cool. But you can see here that the rim lock is nice and set. The beads are all the way down in the rim there and everything's looking pretty good. So what I like to do at this point is um, kind of get the, I, at this point, I like to get the valves back into each one of these valve stems, both the outer chamber and the inner liner. 
And I actually like to go, kind of go one at a time, feel a little bit of pressure in the inner chamber to kind of get some pressure on the bead and then try to get some pressure in the outer chamber and then refill the inner chamber to pop the bead. And then we'll talk about getting the slime there. All right, so we got the valve steps back in there. I'm gonna grab my air pump. So I'm gonna start with the inner liner, which is totally flat. And I'm just gonna put probably like 20 to 30 PSI in there. Hopefully that'll get me enough, maybe 40 PSI. Maybe that'll give me a little bit of leverage to get some air in the, the outer chamber a little bit too. Basically what I'm trying to do is expand the tire a little bit so that it makes it easier for it to slide onto the bead. And it sounds like we're still, still needs more pressure in the inner chamber. So I'm gonna go back on the inner liner here and bring myself up. There we go. About, that, about 60 right now, so you can go up to uh, 110. Well, it's just popping the beads, it's great. So I'm gonna go to 110. Like so. I'm gonna get a little bit of pressure in the outside chamber. Maybe go to like 20 on that. Got some spritzing right there, right? So that's basically everything in the inner liner. You hear that pop and you can see all this extra armor all coming out from around the bead. That's a good sign. You wanna kind of follow your fingers around the bead and make sure that everything's all even, that the bead is seated on the rim. All right. I'm at about 20 PSI in the outer chamber. So I'm gonna go ahead and check everything. On the other side of the tire too. Check the bead on the other side of the tire. That's looking pretty darn good. It looks like it's seated right in. This is why that lubrication is so important, right? You wanna make sure that that inner bladder sets that bead on the rim nice and tight. A lot of times, if you don't use enough lubrication or if you're using soapy water, um, it actually, you'll, you'll get some like these weird little micro leaks around the bladder and the tube. And it's just kind of a pain in the ass. Um, so that's the other really good thing about slime is that the slime is not just uh, good for, you know, saving your butt on the trail. It also helps seal the bladder on the initial install. And I'll show you what I mean here. So it looks like the bead's totally set. I'm gonna go ahead and torque my um, uh, rim lock here to uh, 11 foot pounds. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, 11 foot pounds, cool. So that's the bead being set and the rim lock is now torqued. So Get the slime in, I'm pulling the valve stem from the, the valve on the rim lock, which is going to the outer chamber. But we're also going to use the slime to seal the bead uh, and the bladder and the tire together in a much better way. Um, you can get these weird little micro, you know, kind of leaks as the tire and the bladder set in together. And if you, use slime in this way that I'm about to show you, you can actually avoid that altogether. So let's just go ahead and drain the inner bladder too. I'm gonna to leave, I'm gonna drain the inner bladder by relieving, releasing the valve stem, but I'm gonna put the valve back in afterwards because we're almost done. Cool. So now you have to imagine that the, the tire, right, is, has been pushed out and is set on both of the beads and that inner bladder is in there, but it's deflated. Right, so now we have some space between the tire and the inner bladder. And what I'm gonna do is after I put this slime in, which is really straightforward, 
what I'm going to do is get some slime to go in between the inner bladder and the tire. It helps lubricate everything in there, keep everything nice and uh, yeah, lubrication on the inside of the tire is actually really important too. You can get wear spots on your tubeless system um, if you're running low enough PSI. So getting wherever you can get slime in there too add, makes more lubrication, which is great. So let's get the slime in the tire. We are done with the bucket if you want to be. Done with the tire irons, luckily. So just uh, you pull the valve stem from the outer port chamber. You got your slime here. You just gotta pull your little hose. So we wanna do, it says eight ounces for a dirt bike tire. I'm gonna go, um, I actually like to go 10 because I know I'm gonna lose some in the process that I'm about to do here. So just go ahead and find your outer chamber valve stem with no valve on it. Put the tube on it. And if you look on the side of the slime, there's measurements, so just see where your slime's at and then subtract 10 ounces. So I'm at 24 right now, I'm gonna go down to about 14. Now just go ahead and start squeezing the slime in. This part actually kind of stinks the most. It's actually my least favorite part of the whole, whole process, honestly. Okay, once you get your 10 ounces, eight to 10 ounces of slime in the tire, right, we have to think that, like I said, the bead is expanded because we just set it with, the, uh, with that process of expanding the inner liner to about 110 PSI and getting a little bit of air in the outer. So the bead is nice and set, but that inner bladder is uh, deflated at the moment. So once you get your slime in there, what you can do to get a little bit of slime between the, the tire and the bladder is just go ahead and spin the tire and hit it on the ground. Do this for about, I don't know, two minutes and then uh, and then you're pretty much done with the process. Just re-put your valve stems in there and uh, inflate the inner bladder to 110 and the outer to whatever pressure you want. And um, you probably will see some slime come out from this inner bladder stem, right? So the inner bladder stem, inner liner stem, because we're smashing slime in between the tire and the, uh, the, the liner, you will see some slime come out of this. I like to think that's a good sign. Um, but if you see a lot of slime come out of that, uh, you know, over the period of a couple of rides, um, you know, that's probably not too great. It might mean that your, your inner, inner liner, your tire are not se sealing for some reason. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, yeah, getting the slime in there does help make sure that the inner liner and the tire are sealed and you've got a nice outer chamber that will hold whatever PSI you want. So. Cool, so I got my valve stem and my slime cap and I'm putting the valve stem back in for the outer chamber. I'm gonna keep this bag nice and tight on this disc for a moment. You'll see why in a second. So then the last thing to do, leave your bag on there and then just use that same, you know, multi-purpose rubber vinyl cleaner. I like this Armor All multi-purpose cleaner. It's great in the cars and it's also Great for doing this crap. Uh, and then just give your give your tire a nice your tire and wheel a nice cleanup, and then you can pull your plastic bag off, uh, put your air in your chambers, right? So 100 to 110 on the inner, and then whatever PSI you want to run on the outer, um, and you are good to go. You've got a slimed tubeless tire, and, and it took under, under an hour to do so, even with filming. So um, it's not too terrible once you get the hang of it. So don't be intimidated by it, and don't feel like you need to go spend $300 on a Rabaconda just yet. Um, unless you're running mooses. If you're running mooses, then yeah, you probably need to go buy that thing. One other thing to note, if you think you did get some, you know, some uh, armor all on your brake disc rotor, no big deal. If you even have any, you know, thought you did that, that at all, no big deal. Just grab some brake parts cleaner and a rag and give it a little, a little wash. It's not the rotor that's gonna get hurt, right? The rotor can get a little bit of armor all on it. Um, it's the pads, if the, if the armor all gets into the pads and saturates the pads, that's what, that's what could be potentially bad. So yeah, just use some brake parts cleaner, clean your brake rotor, just go around a few times. And if you think you got any on there, you should be fine. All right guys, uh, thanks so much for watching Source ADV. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments or anything like that. 
I'll try to put some links to whatever tools I was using here in the description. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, more videos coming soon. Take care. <laughs>